How's it going, everyone? My name is Sam. Welcome back to Keep On Coding. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of ChatGPT by now, and some of you have probably even tried it out for yourselves. Now, most of the commotion over ChatGPT is, is it gonna replace software engineers? Are machines gonna take over the world? They already have. For me, I thought to myself, is there any way to use this software to automate any part of my workflow? Because that would be a game changer. Most of the videos I see now are, you, you know, using ChatGPT to create a website or a game that's just like a throwaway project. But to have an actual real world use case of it would be pretty cool. Currently, a large portion of my day and a huge bottleneck for me is creating technical questions for my website. So if I can leverage chat GPT to cut my workload in like even half, that would be huge. It would give me a lot more time to do other things like create more video content or watch more anime. I initially tried to offload my work by hiring people on fiverr.com to create questions for me and it, uh, it, it just didn't work out. They were very slow. A lot of their stuff was wrong. It took me longer to work with them and check their work than to just do it myself. Not to mention I had to pay them, which I wouldn't mind if they did a good job, but ChatGPT is free. At least it's free for now. They also do have a plus version, which does things like it gives you faster response speed, available even when the demand is high. But I think for what I need, at least for now, the free plan works just fine. All right, my workflow for creating a question is as follows. I think of a coding question. This part takes the longest time because I have to first think of what topic on my website is lacking in questions. Uh, it has to be a somewhat original question. Uh, there are only so many interview topics uh, and most questions are a flavor of that topic. I have to decide the difficulty of the question. So easy, medium, or hard. How do I currently choose the difficulty of a problem? I go, hey, this looks like an easy problem. Hey, this looks like a hard problem. It's very scientific. So then I write the prompt for the question and I give the user usually one to three examples that give the input and the expected output. And then I'll add any constraints or hints for the question. Finally, I run an additional 10 to 20 test cases that the user's code runs against when they submit their solution. I have to think of all the possible corner cases and edge cases. I have to test against small inputs, large inputs, and anything else depending on the nature of the problem. As you can see, it's a very manual process and it opens up things for error. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to use chat GPT to create a question. And at the end of it, I'll let you guys know if this is something I plan to use going forward. So stick around for that. All right, so what topic do we want to do? If we go to link list, we see that we're definitely lacking in the link list department. Two questions is not acceptable. So let's add another one. We have an easy and a medium. So let's uh, let's go with another medium. So I head over to chat GPT. It's really easy to make an account and let's go ahead and ask. So here I say, give me a medium level link list coding interview question. It says here, sure, here's a medium level link list coding interview question. Given a singly linked list, write a function to delete the nth node from the end of the list and return its head. And down here, it even gives us the solution. So that's pretty cool. So it gives us an explanation of the code. So given a singly linked list, write a function to delete the nth node from the end of the list and return its head. So this is a really good problem. Now, one issue is now if you're familiar with unit tests, you know you have you usually have a function and it returns an output and you assert it against another value. You check it and make sure that the values are equal. That's the, the general use case for unit tests. Now it's very easy to test against things like integers or Boolean values or even arrays. However, with linked lists, I do have to write some custom code to check that all the nodes are equal, which I definitely can do. And I think I do for one of the existing problems. But I think for this video, let's go ahead and ask something where it returns an integer value. It's just, it'll just make things simpler. So here I say, give me another question where the answer is an integer value. So here it gives me, you are given an array of integers. So this isn't a linked list problem. So I, I guess I have to specify that I want a linked list problem. So let me try that again. So I'll say, give me a medium level linked list question where the answer is an integer value. And let's see what it does. All right, so here is a medium level linked list question where the answer is an integer value. All right, so now that's, that, that's done. So the question is given a linked list, determine if it contains a cycle. 
If it does, return the length of the cycle, otherwise return a zero. Okay, this is, I really like this problem. So for example, given the length list one, two, three, four, five, two, the function should return four because the cycle has a length of four. Okay, so now that we have the question, the next step is to create a couple of examples for the user. So I'll say, give me a couple of examples with edge cases. So it gave me, I said a couple examples, which means two, but it gave me at least five here. But that's totally fine, more is better. So five examples, I really love the variety. So the first one is where there is a cycle, it returns a four. The second one, there is no uh, cycle. The next two are also, uh, has a cycle of six, the other one doesn't. And then we have a larger example here for the last, for example, five. I'll probably show the first two to the user. So this looks really good. This is definitely useful. Let's, uh, let's do a couple more. Like I said, I like to have 10 to 20 test cases, but I usually create those myself. Now that I have this program creating them, I can definitely create more. So let's just do, you know, give me 20 test cases. We'll just say, uh, give me 20 more test cases. So it's generating the test cases. My only complaint is I wish it did this faster. I don't know why it's printing these out one by one. So once this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all these test cases. I do, I do need to have them in a specific format for my website, but I do have my own program that does that. So I just need to plug in these test cases that are provided and it'll generate all the test cases, all the unit tests. By the way, it looks like it just stopped generating it after test case eight. I'm not sure why. Um, I guess it's not that big of a deal. I guess I could just do like five at a time, um, but yeah, it's interesting why it would just stop there. I don't know. Later. All right, so everything is added on the back end. This is what it looks like on the front end. Here we have the name link list cycle length courtesy of chat GPT. This is the development build running on my local machine on port 3000. And if everything looks good, we can push this to production. So if we go back to the chat and right here, here is the code for the solution. Now it does have a different uh, function name. So I'll just go ahead and copy everything under that. So if we go here and we paste that in, let's go ahead and run it against the custom test case, which is the first example provided. We see all tests passed, congrats. We get the green smiley face. And then we'll hit submit, which submits it against all the test cases. And it looks good. So the thing that could be an issue is ChatGPT provided the test cases and it also provided the code. I don't know for sure that the code does what it's supposed to do. I don't know for sure that it's solving this problem. So I will have to go through and manually check that this is working. So it goes to show that I can't completely automate this process yet, but it's much easier to verify code than to write this all from scratch. Now, one last thing is I do provide JavaScript support on my platform. So what we can do here is say, give me the solution in JavaScript. So right now it's giving me the JavaScript solution. In the past, I had to write the Python version and then translate everything over to JavaScript, which was tedious based on the solution. So if we go ahead and just copy this, paste our solution in, hit submit, wait for it to run the test cases and everything passed. Now, is this something that I will use moving forward? Yes, absolutely. It reduces error, it saves time, so it's pretty much a no-brainer. I remember last year I did a video going over GitHub Copilot and how that auto-completes the, you basically like write a sentence on what you want and it provides the code for you. And it was really cool, but to be honest, I haven't used it since I made that video. This is something I can see myself using almost daily. Most people, when they hear ChatGPT, they're worried about you know AI taking over software-related jobs. And maybe one day it will, but for now at least, the engineers that can leverage this software to improve their workflow are the ones that are gonna be the most successful. And it's not really just software engineers. Just recently, my friend used ChatGPT. He's, he's not an engineer or anything. He used it to vastly improve his LinkedIn profile. So it just goes to show that it's a multi-purpose software. All right, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding. I almost forgot to say it there.